I want to focus on uh, really the very broad area or issue of trust that Mr. Davidson raised, uh, which I think goes to the core of much of what you do with the consent and acquiescence of consumers and most particularly the practice and goal of building uh, wireless network maps. Both Apple and Google are engaged in that business activity, are you not? Yes. Yes. And in particular, uh, Mr. Davidson, I want to ask some questions about the uh, Google Y Spy experience, scandal, debacle, all three terms have been used to refer to it. Uh, in particular, as you well know, and now we all know, uh, for three years, Google intercepted and collected bits of user information, payload data, emails, passwords, uh, browsing history, and other personal information while driving around taking pictures of people's homes on the streets in the Street View program. Uh, the company first denied that it was collecting this information. Did it not? It did. We did not believe that we were. Did it? We did not know that we were. And then it denied that it was collecting it intentionally. Is that true? Uh, I think we still believe we were not collecting it intentionally. And in fact, uh, this personal data uh, and the interception and uh, downloading of this personal data is contemplated, in fact, by a patent application that's been submitted by Google to both the U.S. Patent Office and internationally. Does it not? Uh, I'm not specifically familiar with the details of the patent application. I think you've been provided with a copy. Is that what this is here? Uh, maybe you could have a look at it. Okay. Do you recognize the document? Have you seen it before? I have not seen this document before, uh, but I'm probably roughly, uh, I have not seen this document before. Are you familiar with the goal that it describes of, in fact, pinpointing the locations of wireless routers to construct a wireless network map by intercepting and downloading the payload data in precisely the way that Google denies having done. No, I'm not. I, I apologize. I am not familiar with uh, that aspect of uh, of this, or really uh, uh, anything rela relating that to this patent to content to the content of Paylaid. Are Are you aware that this process mm -hmm. may have been used in the Street View program to collect private confidential information and use it to construct right. Right. the uh, wireless network route. That would be, I would be very surprised. I think it's, we have tried to be very clear about the fact that it was not our policy to collect this information. It was not the company's intent to collect the content or payload information. I think we've been very specific about the fact that we never used that information. Uh, as you indicated, people at the company were quite surprised uh, and honestly embarrassed to find out that we had been collecting it. So this, we, we've, we've said before, this was a mistake that we did not intend uh, uh, to collect this information. And we've tried very hard to uh, work with regulators to make sure we're now doing the responsible thing. We haven't used it. And uh, we are working with pay regulators around the world to figure out what to do with it. And in some, many cases, we've destroyed it. Why would the company then submit a patent application mm -hmm. for the process, that very process that it denies having used? And I, I'm sorry I can't speak to the specifics of this patent. Um, we were not aware that, you, you, that this was a topic for today's hearing. But I will say, uh, generally, we submit patent applications for many, many different things. Often they are fairly speculative. Uh, we probably do, I don't know, hundreds of patent applications a year, uh, certainly scores. And uh, it would not be surprising at all that in this area that is so important, we would be looking for innovative ways to provide uh, location-based services. Uh, but I, it was certainly, as we have said publicly, it was a mistake, and we certainly never intended to collect payload information. Well, in fact, the, the payload information would be extremely valuable in constructing this wireless network map, would it not? I, 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 I'm not 
sure that we would say that. I think that what's most important is basically having the identification of a, of a hotspot and a, uh, and a location, which is what we, which we were, were collecting. Uh, and that's what we've used to create this kind of database as others have. And uh, it's not obvious that small snippets of a few seconds of whatever happens to be broadcast in the clear from somebody's home at any given precise second when you're passing by with a car would necessarily be that valuable. And I, I think we certainly never intended to collect it. Would it uh, be valuable in your opinion, uh, Mr. Triple, to have that kind of payload data in constructing a wireless network map? Um, I, I'm actually not sure how valuable it is. Yeah, your mic on. Yes, Senator. Um, I'm actually not sure how valuable it would be. Uh, we don't collect that or use that in, in our mechanisms for uh, geolocating. Um, and uh, uh, in fact, I checked uh, with the engineering group, and they said it'd be, they're not sure how you would do that. But I'm, they probably haven't seen the patent. So I, I can't really, I guess, specifically answer your question. Let me ask Mr. Brookman and Mr. Sultani whether you have an opinion as to whether payload data would be useful in strengthening the location network or map. I'm not a technologist, so I'll mostly defer to Mr. Sultani. My instinct is that I don't think that it would be. The primarily interesting fact is that here is a wireless access point. Um, they may need to sense that it's sending information out. Te technologically, but I don't believe that the content of that uh, communication would be valuable at all. I would concur with Justin. Um, I, th I think the, the small differentiation is uh, what you're referring to is whether the header information, which is um, not necessarily, it, there's a question of whether that's payload data. So um, Google collects the information about the hotspot, which includes the header information about the MAC address or the identifier for that hotspot. And I think that's the question of whether that's payload data. I would feel like it's also not payload data, but um, that, that's, that remains to be determined by others. Uh, let me turn back then to Mr. Davison. What are the plans that Google has to use or dispose of the information that has been downloaded and collected? So we are uh, in active conversation with many regulators, uh, including uh, your former office in the state of Connecticut, but regulators around the world. Some of them have asked us to destroy the data, and we've done so. Some of them are continuing their investigations. Our intent is to answer all the questions of any regulator who's got an interest in this fully. Um, we do not intend to ever use this data. We intend to dispose of it in whatever form regulators tell us we should. And would you agree that collection of this data violates privacy rights and that it may in fact be illegal? I, uh, I think our position was that uh, it is not, it was not illegal, but it was not our intent either, and it wasn't uh, what we, how, we, how we expect to operate our services. If it was not illegal, don't you agree it should be? I think this raises a really complicated question about the, what happens to things that get broadcast in the clear and what the obligations are about people in, uh, hearing them. And uh, I think it's, it's a complicated question. It's a really, it's an important question, but you, I think we'd have to be careful about it. I think the law appropriately says, uh, regulates, uh, I believe it regulates uh, the use of that information. And as I've said before, we have no intention to use it. I will have uh, additional questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my time has expired and I appreciate your indulgence. In the meantime, uh, I'd like these patents to be made a part of the record. Absolutely.